Hello, my vacuum cleaner chums. How are you today? I did go to the car boot today. However, there was a white 1600 watt bagged Panasonic with no tools and a Hetty that had already been sold and I'd imagine for too much because it needed the full toolkit. But I didn't come away empty handed. I bought a laptop. Yes, it is an IBM ThinkPad 240. So I thought I'd do a little video just because I do like a bit of technology. Although you, you, this is technology in the loosest sense of the word, especially nowadays, it's interesting nonetheless. So all it came with were these, a setup guide, which tells you how to set it up in the original sense and the phone number for, I have no idea, and this. An IBM ThinkPad 240, a powerhouse of a machine. It's got a PCI card slot, probably microphone, aux in, or line in and headphones. That is apparently a proprietary IBM floppy drive connector, the Kensington Lee shot, shot slot, a modem, remember them kids, power. Parallel, serial, PS2 and one USB 1 port and infrared. Underneath is just the battery, the Judas Type 2609. I don't know when it was made. I'll be honest, it might we could probably find out. Copyright 1999 and Wikipedia slash Google says 1999 for this is about $3,000. So, inside, it looks like this. It's actually quite a horrible keyboard to type on because the layout's a bit different. But it's very clean. Barely anywhere. Look, made for Microsoft Windows NT. And when I told Tay up this via Facebook Messenger, he didn't know what Windows NT was. I had to laugh a little bit because I grew up with NT in 98. So there we go. Now when I first got it, it was dead. In fact, that's why it was only three pounds because the guy hadn't checked it because he didn't have a power adapter for it. And I have a one of the universal different plugs onto the end laptop charger, which I couldn't find when we came home. But I did find this, which is a Thompson Telecom. No idea where the smegit came from, but it's 15 volts, this is 16, and that fits it perfectly, and it's been charging quite happily all day. And because it's been charging quite happily all day, I can confirm that the battery is actually quite good. Which amazed me, I was expecting that it would be completely and utterly shot. So the battery is quite good, and it will boot up. Let's go into the BIOS, because the date and time needs setting up. Before I show you what it comes with, because it's, it's it's quite interesting, we're going to have a bit of a play. I've never done one of these style videos before, so here we go. It is a 300 megahertz Intel Celeron mobile with 64 megabytes of RAM. I don't, uh, yeah, there we go. 64, well, 60, yeah, 65. It's got a two meg graphics card. It's amazing. BIOS, I can't update because I don't have the floppy drive. Probably won't bother either. Oh. The advanced setup, serial port disabled, infrared disabled. I haven't changed these, so I'm just going through them. Well, parallel port, let's disable that because I'm never going to use it. PCI is there. Keyboard and mouse is enabled. I don't know what's typematic rate. What's the typematic rate? Let's leave that as normal. Oh. Power. Maximum performance, if you can say performance. Others, what's others? Reset config data, we'll leave that. Boot display device, it's never going to have another screen. HV expansion, no idea. Brightness, meh. Startup screen, yeah, we'll have the IBM logo, why not? So, Date and time, I have noticed that it's defaulted itself to 2007, which is quite annoying. I don't know if it needs changing. So, I have my actual laptop here. It's a world of difference. What is the date and time? It is 1936. So, 19... 
36 and the seconds are 5. Date is the 20th of the 8th, 2017. So there we go. There is no password, so I'm not going to mess around and set one up. Start up. That's a shame because I was hoping to boost it from a USB stick. Maybe we'll have to get that, that plot boot manager going at some point, but we'll play about with it first. So we'll save those changes. Hopefully, it will display the right time now. Put the setup guide out of the way. Yeah, the setup guide is quite interesting. Shame it didn't come with all the manuals and stuff, but then it probably would have more than three pounds. So let's see what it does. It beeps. The look, it beeps straight into Windows 98, which is a blast from my past. When was I? 1999. I would have been. I was 13 when this came out. I grew up with Windows 98. <coughs> and now we've got Windows 10. I don't know what this is all about. I don't care if it pushes forward. So I, I, I don't know if the little EEPROM battery is dead. So that's why I chose the date. We'll see if it's any good when it boots up. See, I grew up with 98 and 95 actually. So this is a blast from the past. Don't know if it'll stay on 98. Here we go. Look, luckily, it hasn't got a password. Although if it did, I was going to go find that GIF that I've seen, which basically tells you how to get into Windows 98 without a password by trying to add a printer to print the help menu out, which helps you get in. It then boots straight up into Windows, apparently. There we go. Windows has updated your clock. No, I've updated my clock. It's very weird using an IBM nipple again. Like my HP's got one, but I never ever use it. And you can see by the shininess of the trackpad, I use that. This hasn't got that, so it's very weird getting used to a nipple. So we've got 6.30, oh, it's 7.39. Oh, uh, there you go, 6.39 p.m. February the 8th, it's not February the 8th. Let's set this up then, so it's August the 20th. The 20th, there it is, Sunday. I'm used to a different calendar at work. It goes Monday to Sunday. Apply. Okay. Not that make a spotty. <sighs> and look, it boots up into somebody's desktop. Now keep an eye down there. Because so much crap loads up. And I'm going to unpack a mouse that I found because I cannot be dealing with using that nipple. I'll wait for it to load up there. And I've got the adapter ready in case the battery does decide to go. Not about an hour in a minute, Eva's been typing on it. So it still hasn't loaded. It's a 300. Ooh. What's he doing? Is he going to blue screen? Is he going to blue screen? It did a few times. No, it's just turned off. Blue screen when I very, very, very first turned it on. Let's plug it in, just in case. So Eva has been using it for about an hour and a half. It did say it was half full, but maybe it won't surprise me if the battery's dead. I'll be honest. Maybe it doesn't like it being 2017. Maybe I need to. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, look at that power, you know. I think it's lying to me. open the back door while that boots up. That beeps normal. Ooh, it has, oh, no, that's the setup. Uh, no, nobody cares. Nobody cares at all about you, check disc. What did you solve? Nothing. Nothing at all. 
Let's have a look at the keyboard while this loads up, just because it's lovely. There we go. What's different is that there's no caps lock. There's a tab, which is very annoying when you, because I use a caps lock because I'm naughty when I type. So that causes confusion. The caps lock is like the FN and shift. Um, it's just a little bit small. I, I, I'm used to typing on this, which is a HP ProBook 6570, which is identical to my work laptop, and it's mainly why I bought this off eBay. And I can type very fast on these. That's a little bit different. But there we go. Right, let's see if it loads up this time. Still saying it's only 642, but I'll ignore that. I reckon the little BIOS battery's gone. So it's owned, or was owned, by somebody called David Mitchell, because there's three copies of his CV on here. I won't show you them, although they're pretty rubbish. Nobody should have a three-page CV, ever. If you've got a three-page CV, don't do it. So here we go. There's the first of the crap. Second. At least it's booting this time. Third, third, but that's actually the system something or other. Let's get the mouse ready. We'll go and clean this all up. Let's plug the mouse in and see if it'll work. Ooh, USB optical mouse. Oh crud, it's not gonna need the drivers, is it? Uh-oh. Oh, I forgot it was. Oh, <laughs> it's been a nice, oh, damn! So I can't use this. Fiddlesticks! I forgot about that. Damn you, Windows 10 and 7 and Vista and XP and even 2000. So we cannot use the mouse. So I've got to fumble around with this nipple. So what have we got down here? It's still loading stuff up. We've got Speed Touch ADSL modem. AOL, Norton, Pah. Blue Manager 3.1, this is the infrared port, that is obviously the speakers, this is the battery, so it it, it, it wasn't very happy because that's on 0% there, and the other one is scheduled tasks, but there's all this on the, dash, on the desktop, so we've got Norton 2003, it's got Office 2000, so that's where all the office icons are. And it's basically all rubbish, so let's get rid of that first. Because I hate stuff on the desktop. Oh, I didn't see stuff in the recycle bin. Ooh. Let's be nosy and have a look. I love going through machines that have little stuff on them. What's he deleted? What's Mr. Mitchell put in the recycle bin? Anything interesting? DCA? What's DC 35, 36, 37? Is this vacuum? I, honestly, I have not set this up. I don't even know where that was. Where's that put itself? Has that gone into my documents? No. Uh, how, do you, how do you tell where it was? Uh, come on, I want to know what DC is. Let's go into my documents. I want to know, is it vacuum cleaning related? That would be funny, wouldn't it? Any pic oh, there's some pictures. Should we look at the pictures? I can't imagine it's Dyson related. Oh god, the pictures are opening up in Internet Explorer. Ha! Oh, that's pretty. Bye bye. These aren't going to be porn, are they? Oh, this is someone. Who's this picture of? It's 
one of those, Mr. David Mitchell. Who knows, but we're not, not going to find these DC files and I'm not going to spend another half an hour of your time looking for them. So we'll pop, yes, I know it's a program, go away. Put that in there. Right, let's go uninstall some stuff. Because this isn't running very, very healthily at all. So, start. Settings. Control panel. It's running all right with 64 megabytes. I need to upgrade it, but it takes PC66. And it can have, apparently, an unofficial 309 meg. The problem is, 64 meg is soldered to it. And the only real sticks I can find are 128. However, apparently, this uses the same RAM, or PC66 RAM, was used on the PowerBooks and iMacs. So, I have found a stick on Amazon for 20 flipping quid, which I might indulge in. Can't say I've not been looking at a new hard drive either. And I did earlier spend £3 on a... What? It's there! It is installed! Oh my goodness. Alright, let's try this creative rubbish. <laughs> you go away. I should have got some benchmark stuff. I wonder if it'll take a pen drive. I've got a 2 gig USB stick here in the shape of a lorry. I can't put any drivers on it if this doesn't work until I get... Oh, I bought a USB CD ROM, which probably isn't going to work because I can't put drivers on it. I don't think this is 98 SE either. Oh, crumbs. Oh, well, let's uninstall this. Custom. What's under custom? But, yeah, select all. Yeah, select all. Yeah, select all. Would it have selected all if I just press typical? Probably not. This is very thorough. Why can't it be like this nowadays? It's finding all the registry keys and config files. Finish. Yeah, well, oh, my computer's not there, is it? Oh, hang on, what's in there? Yes to all. Right, I can't push Windows D to get to the desktop. Because there is no Windows key. My computer hasn't found the pen drive. No. Flip. I don't have a parallel port to SD card slot or how am I going to store the Wi-Fi card? I'm not going to have to buy a floppy driver for this thing, am I? With the Pietry connector. This limits me somewhat because I now can't install anything. I know what we can do though. What everybody my age used to use Windows 98 for accessories. Is <gasps> it configured in games? Where's Solitaire? Oh, uh, entertainment is it? No. Internet. Oh, why have they got rid of Solitaire? There's loads of space on the hard drive. It's only got 5 gig use. There's 13 gigabytes free. <sighs> oh, well. Right, I'm going to stop this video now because I've warmed on long enough. But yes, this is my ThinkPad T240. I have lots of plans for this. Well, not lots. Of, I, I have some fun stuff I might do to it. But I, mean, I might open it up in another video if you want and clean it out. But for now, I'm a little bit buggered because I can't install anything that means I can't put Linux on it because I can't get I haven't got another computer oh I don't think I've got a computer I'm going to buy a USB floppy drive <gasps> Eva's Dell upstairs has a floppy drive actually Eva, I've got a Dell for Eva an old precision that was being thrown away so I'm going to get that out oh this is going to be fun just to put drivers onto a floppy drive to Get this working. 
happy joy. So, thank you very much for watching this not a vacuum cleaner video. I did get some vacuum cleaner stuff. There was a box, and in that box, I saw a DC like dusting brush, Dyson dusting brush. And I mean, oh, let, looked inside of it. There was a DC 40 slash 41 tool holder and a DC 40 slash 41 upholstery tool, both of which I need. Two pound for all three. Very happy. And this for three pounds. So I spent five pounds today. I'm happy with my five pounds. Thank you very much for watching this boring video. If you want to see more, do shout in the comments and I shall put something together. If you don't, just say shut up and stick to Hoovers. And that is what I'll do because I listen to my viewers. Thank you very much and goodbye.